YouTubers, welcome back. This is video number 35 of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, February 11th, 2011. It's pretty cold this morning. As you can see, all my windows are frosted. Anyways, to get started today, I'm just going to show you guys my latest tools that I bought. These are Torx screwdrivers made by Jet. They go from T10 to T30, and I specifically bought the ones with the hard handles like that. I have other Torx screwdrivers with soft handles, but the oil gets impregnated in them and the rubber rips off like that. So I got the hard handle because hopefully that won't happen. They've got black tips like this. They are warranted for life, so that's good. If they break, just bring them back and they'll replace them for free. Now if you're interested in getting this kit, there's the number four here. There are the numbers right here. Now my first question today, somebody's wondering how long does an auger belt last on the snowblower? I posted a video earlier this week about changing the belt on an MTD snowblower and I guess that got people wondering about that. A snowblower auger belt can last anywhere from one year to ten years. It all depends on how you use it. If you live in an area where you get a lot of snow, obviously it's going to get a lot more use. Also if you live near a road and the plow comes by, it leaves you a lot of debris from the road, your blower will work a lot harder like that. And that can also cause premature wear to your belts. Here's an MTD blower here with the two belt auger system. Some MTD blowers only have one auger belt here, like in the previous video that I posted on how to replace the MTD auger belt. What can happen too is if you have ice in your auger over here, especially down where the impeller is over here and it's frozen in there, and if you keep the auger lever down on the blower and it's frozen, what's going to happen is it's going to wear the belt prematurely in one spot. For a belt to last longer, it's got to be spinning around all the time. It cannot be stationary and this one spin on it because it's going to wear it out. It's going to start smoking. Now if you're using your blower and you smell smoke, that means that something's not right and it's wearing your belts prematurely. On some blowers, the belt doesn't necessarily have to break to be worn out. Sometimes it's going to get really skinny or thin. The width is going to be a lot less than it should be when it's new. And sometimes it will end up slipping on the pulley here because it's stretched and too thin to fit in the grooves here like they should. So a good tip, check them every year. If you smell smoke, stop right away and check to see if everything's okay. That way you're going to prevent a lot of unnecessary wear to your belt. Now the next question, this YouTuber has an old Aaron snowblower with an 8 horsepower Tecumseh engine. He says when he throttles up, he sees a bit of smoke like it's burning oil. And he's wondering, are the rings causing this problem or is it the valve guides? Well, before I explain that, first of all, I want to let everybody know that sometimes when you throttle up on your Tecumseh engine, fall like that, it is normal to see a bit of smoke puff out, especially if the engine's not too warm. And I've even seen them do it if the engine's warm. It'll make a bit of smoke when you first throttle up, but then it'll stop. So if it puffs smoke like that when you throttle up, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's burning oil. If you notice that you're always adding oil to your snowblower, then obviously it's burning oil. Now back to the question, is the YouTubers wondering, is it the rings causing that or the valve guides? Well, it could be both. First of all, I would check the valves to make sure they're not loose in the valve guides. And while you've got the engine apart, you might as well put new piston rings in there. So what you would do is remove the valves if you've got a flathead like this by going in here and removing the springs. I do have a video that shows how to remove the valves on your Tecumseh engine. I will post the link underneath this video for you to go watch that. Now where my pick is, that's the valve guide. Up here is the valve stem. To be specific, it's the intake valve on this motor. Now after you've removed the valve and you put it back in the guide halfway and you can move it back and forth like that or sideways, that means that the guide is worn out. In that case, what's probably happening is oil's being sucked in through here, right through the guide and into the engine when it feeds itself on fuel. So that could be causing your engine to burn a lot of oil. Another sign that it's burning a lot of oil is there's going to be a lot of carbon up here. And when you look at the head here, it's going to be loaded with carbon. This one's not too bad. If it were burning oil, it would be like really thick, like one eighth of an inch to up to a quarter inch I've seen. It could also be that your rings are worn out. The bottom ring is the oiler ring. So while you've got the engine apart, you might as well replace the rings. They're not that expensive. You can also get slightly oversized and then hone out the cylinder 
to fit that specific size of rings you get. Or you could even get just standard sized rings. That will help as well. Now in case you're wondering what happened to this engine, it's blown. It blew a connecting rod. And I'll be posting a video soon of when I took this engine apart to show you. Now my last question is somebody's wondering if the primer line on their Tecumseh engine is 1 8 inside diameter. Well it is 1 8 inside diameter and to be sure of that I just grab a drill bit and insert it inside the line then you're positively sure that it's that size. So anytime you want to check the inside diameter of a fuel line or a primer line just insert a drill bit. And if it's just nice and snug in there, not too tight, not too loose, then that's the proper size. So that'll be it for this week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments and have yourselves a great weekend. See you next Friday.